Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in JavaScript and today we're going to be going over the browser object model and there's quite a bit of stuff in this one so this is my very poor excuse for a model it's well not even a model really but so you have your current window that's open on your web browser all of these objects are associated with it so if you could imagine a little picture that shows current window with a little line that goes out to each of these that says, oh yeah, all of these belong to the current window. So we have the window objects, we have the navigator objects, we have the array objects, the document objects, history objects, location objects, and the screen objects. Uh, well, let's go through some of them really quickly since we won't be doing all of them. First of all, the navigator objects are not supported by all browsers. In fact, there's quite a few that don't support it. I know Internet Explorer does and Netscape does. I don't know any others that do. Uh, so, bup gets to the navigator. Sorry. The next video, as you might have seen, or maybe you haven't, will be on arrays. So we won't be doing this in this video. This is quite a bit of stuff. Document object actually has its own model, just like this one. This is the DOM, the document object model. So that's going to be heavy loads for a future video. So that just leaves us with the window objects, history, location, and screen objects. So let's get started. So first, I'm going to create a function. I'll call it sample, as I always do. And outside of my script tags, I'm going to create a button. So it's an input device. The value, which is what appears on the button, I'll have it say, click here. And the event handler, the on click, will be the name of the function. So, well, let's start messing around with things. So the first thing you can do is, I'll just create an alert box is check to see whether a browser is opened or closed and you can use the closed method in order to do that and it will return a boolean value of true or false so I'll just put down window since we're working with the window object you can type in window you can also type in self s-e-l-f that will also work so window closed and since this is a property no parentheses afterwards and let's see what happens. False, because the window is open. So, yeah, you can use something like this for pop-ups, for an example, where it would be like, wait, don't go, and it might want to keep you from leaving, leaving or something like that. Of course, if it's closed, it's already closed, so it doesn't matter. They have already lost you. Uh, okay. Um, there's also the document. Uh, that will be its own thing, where it's just document.write, for an example. There's plenty of others. Uh, that will be its own thing. Length has to do with how many frames. We have not created any frames ever, and eventually they will be, well, defunct. They won't be used anymore. So this should come out as zero, and basically what frames are is being able to load multiple web, multiple URLs on one window. And... Uh, there's a lot of graphical errors and bugs between browsers and even the American with Disabilities Act those people uh, have gone after that I don't know why I just remember reading about that uh, uh, about some something happening or maybe it just hurts people somehow I'm not quite sure but there's there's this it, it's it's gonna be defunct for sure I don't know if it already is an HTML5 I didn't I haven't looked at that and I haven't really messed with that ever so the length just counts how many frames, and we have no frames. All right, even I mean, this by itself is not a default frame. This one thing right here—it's just its own window. Okay, so another thing you can do is location, and what that does is returns the URL of where you are. I'm on my computer, so it's a file that's on my C drive, that's you know just on my computer. So it's not a URL on the internet, but hey still works and there's also the name this will return the name of the website I do not have a name for my website because this is not a website so it's blank 
And another one that you can do, also just so you know, if this if this wasn't real, I wouldn't have had an alert box come up at all. Like if I did went named like this, and I refresh the page, well now I get an undefined. That's because well it's not a real thing. Named is not a real thing. So just so you know, and then status it will return whatever's in the status bar. Firefox does not have a status bar anymore. I believe Internet Explorer still does, but yeah, so you know nothing in the status. So there's no point in that. And those are uh, just some example properties. Uh, an example method would be like the open. This is probably the one method I will show you. It's by far the most important. And it's not an alert box. It's window.open. And let's make this blank first, so I, just so I can show you. So I'll click Save. I'll refresh the page, and it opens a new tab. You can also put in a website. So. So I'll just type in google.com, I think that'll work. Refresh the page, and there's Google. In order to make it open in a new window, you actually have to give it its own specific dimensions. So first, I'm actually going to give it a name, so we could always refer to it later. I'll call it pop-up. And let's give it a height of, I don't know, 400 pixels. A width of, and you can put px too. The px is read by default, so you don't have to worry about that. That's all xhtml right there. Width, I don't know, 500 pixels. Um, is that all I want to do for now? Hmm. Yeah, probably. So I'll refresh the page, and when I click it again, boom, we get the 400 by 500 pixels. And wait, there's there's no scroll bars. Why are there no scroll bars? Well you actually have to define scroll bars with a boolean value so you, so you have to type in scroll bars if you want them to appear equals then you have to either use yes or no or true or false it actually no excuse me or zero or one true or false does not work you cannot use true or false you have to use zero one or yes or no so i will type in yes so that scroll bars will appear and you can look this up for yourself here's the scroll bars you can look up, look them up for the, yourself. There's quite a few different things. You can type in resizable, and yeah, you can tack more onto the end. Resizable, so you can make it so whether the user can make it resizable or not, and just plenty of other things. And yeah, that's that's about it. That's about it for the window object in general. So let's move on to location. So I'll make this an alert box again, and. Well, there's a few I can't really do, but you just type in location, and for an example, you can type in the host, see if you can figure out what the host for your website is. Mine won't work, I don't have a host. But since it doesn't say undefined or it didn't not work, that should prove to you that this is a real, this is a real property. You can also type in host name. So mine for an example for my actual website would be ipage or ipage.com I don't know how it would come up but you can also type in the port to find out the port number again since I, I don't have a port number this is not on the internet so none, none of this will apply I'm sorry that I can't really show you the location stuff but one I can show is the hypertext reference and this one will actually show you the URL again so just like I showed you before here's the URL which is on my computer and yeah that's that's about it there's also the reload and you just type in reload this is a method I believe so if you refresh the page and you type this watch the title you see it it's actually reloading oh the words undefined came up do you see the words undefined came up really quickly? That's because I kept it as an alert box. I shouldn't have done that. Um, but yeah, the reload will reload the page for you. So not in an alert box, though. That's not a good thing. And that's about it for the location object. Next is the history object. So not really much I can show you with the history object, but let's work with it anyways. So with the history, what you can do is type in history, and then you can type in go, for an example, and you can go forward the number of pages in your history basically forward so if I type in one I did this already if you click forward here you see I'm at Google 
well, if I refresh my page here, I'm going to go forward one page, and now I'm there. There's also the back. You can go back. And what that will do is you just type in how many pages back you want to go. It will not take from your history up here. It will only take since you opened the window. So as you can see, I can't go back here. So if I refresh the page, oh, it still went forward. at the save. So if I click this, I can't go back anywhere because I don't have a back here. Uh, but yeah, the back works the same. Then there's also the go, which works pretty much the same. If it's a positive number, it'll go forward that many pages. If it's negative, it'll go backwards that many pages. So it's positive one. So let's see if it works. And it does. So that's pretty cool. Then the last one I'd like to show you is, sorry for that little cut there, nature called. I'm sorry. Okay, so what was I doing? Okay, so you have history.go. Oh, wait, we were done with the history. So all we have to do left now is the screen object. So I'll just type in uh, screen dot. And for an example, you can type in the height. Height in pixels. And we get 1,050. Whoops. Well, I guess the height of my monitor must be 1,050. Uh, the width. I thought I was more than that. Uh, the width should be like 1600 or close to that. 1680, wow, I was pretty close. Uh, then there's also, if you're working with what's available, it'll subtract from your toolbar and just work inside your browser. So you can do, uh, if you do A-V-A-I-L, which is short for available, you can see what's available for width, you know, so it's still 1680. That's because you can max out your browser. It's assuming you can max out your browser and that's why it's still saying 1680 for me and available height should be different only 1010 10. so it's subtracted from the uh, from the toolbar and we can also do pixel depth if you've ever heard of like 8 bit 16 bit 24 bit 32 bit well 24 is my uh, browser so there it is that's pretty much your pixel depth. And that's about it for that. I mean, that's your screen object. And that's really helpful for determining how much space is on somebody's window to make sure if you're doing like animation or whatever that it won't go off their screen. It, it can like do a percentage. If it's this, then only take this amount of space or whatever. Or you can do other things with it. It, it, it can be helpful for certain things. And I'll definitely have a project video for uh, and picture animation and uh, you shouldn't watch that yet because it's got a little bit of what you guys don't know uh, arrays and image arrays so don't watch it yet um, but yeah uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and I'll see you next time